So an angry ex-boyfriend leaves with a woman's toilet after a breakup. <laughs> of all the things this man could take from the house, aliamua kuchukua cho. Cho! Bro, cho! So in a recent interview, Diamond Platinums also shared insights into his meeting with Didi. And I quote, this, uh, this is what Diamond said. There are things we did, but those are not things we can post on social media because we have a future. Now, Congolese superstar Ya Levis recently performed at the Raha Fest and I've seen comments of, I've never been to a concert like that. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. I can't believe I got to meet him. Ki, 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 ha, ha, ha. Stephanie, it's never that serious. Koi didn't attend. So please let us move on to other bigger and better things. But I was recently having a conversation with myself and I thought, why am I not a good candidate to, you know, meet Ya Levis? And I realized... I'm actually not, and here is why. Number one, I like men with dreadlocks. Number two, he's Congolese, so his waistline is lubricated. Number three, he speaks French. French is the language of love. Is it the language of love? Yeah, I think it is. So we are arguing and you tell and you, you're shouting at me in French, bro. Whatever it is that you say, Mr. Sir, I will accept 110%. So it would have either been very good or very bad. I would have either frozen when I'm when I met him, or rather, if I was a girl who was called on stage to dance with him or I would have shown off so bad that I think my family would disown me at some point. But anyway, welcome back to another episode of the News Review right here on Control Z with the Gen Z General Koigakuo, content creator, social media influencer and your host for this show. As usual, lazima tuangalie what, what are our stories for the day. Story number one, exiting with a toilet. Oh, oh. Angry ex-boyfriend leaves with a woman's toilet seat after, not even toilet seat, the whole toilet after a breakup. Story number, oh, eh, he was hot. <laughs> Story number two, if you don't know that song. Anyway, a woman shares how she does evangelism in nightclubs. Story number three, reggae don't stop. Comrade shows new ways of cooking without gas. Oh, comrades, Ruto. Eh. Number four, Vasha to the world. Highlights from the safari rally. And last but not least, PDD case gains more momentum. Jesus Christ. On top of what we have already had, there's more to unpack on the same. Lakini, acha tuangalia story yetu ya kwanza. Exiting with a toilet, surely. Cho. Cho. A toilet. So an angry ex-boyfriend leaves with a woman's toilet after a breakup. <laughs> and the funny thing about this is, this guy was a plumber. One of the most bizarre breakup stories ever is that this plumber boyfriend stole his ex-girlfriend's toilet following their breakup. The woman disclosed that she decided to end things with her boyfriend because the man was stingy. Or rather, he wasn't paying his half of the bills, whether it's house rent, maji, electricity, and everything of the sort. Hakuwa Nalipa, he's part of it. And she narrated that the breakup happened in their shared house. Why is it a shared house? Personally, I think the girl should move into the guy's house. So uh, after this breakup, she went to lie in her bedroom while her now ex, now the guy packed his bags. But she was shocked when she woke up and discovered, ah, I am missing my toilet. Of all the things this man could take from the house, aliamua kuchukua cho. Cho, bro, cho, are you? I know you're a plumber. Unge chukua tap or something or any other plumbing thing in you in the house, you had to take the toilet. So with the toilet gone, the woman was forced to visit the local first. <laughs> she was forced to visit the local fast food eateries whenever nature called. So what happens when she gets when she wants to pee or she wants to use the washroom in the middle of the night? Do I have to which which KFC is open right now? Do I have to Google and check where I can go? You know to use the washroom because Chaliango Ali he panacho. Aye, guys, but you know, eventually she was able to get a new toilet installed, which ended her unconventional bathroom situation. Now, for me, something I would take from my ex's house after we've broken up is the shoelaces to all his shoes. Whether you have boots, 
you have Nikes, you have Jordans, you have whatever. Hata kama ni sharp shooters, I will take all your shoelaces and it will greatly inconvenience you in ways that you will not even see coming. Feel free to give us your um, opinions at Control Z on all social media platforms. Yende mbele injili. Now I came across this video and I... Let me not say what it made me feel, but a woman shares how she does evangelism in nightclubs. Now, there are two words here, evangelism and nightclubs. Now, this young lady who goes by the name Rosa recently took onto TikTok to share how she and her friends do evangelism sessions in clubs. You've prepared yourself, you're ready to have a good night out, and then when you get there, oh, it's evangelism that is happening. So this young lady, Rosa, and her friends identify potential spots where they can be able to share the gospel with people in clubs and have worship hype sessions like that is that is what her and her friend group do and it has healed the netizens as a positive impact on the society although other people or rather from what i have seen e video li post to amali twitter and i went to the comment section why would people want to do this in a club? Why would people da, da 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 But what do you think about the prospects of sharing the gospel in a club? Is it something that you'd be like, oh, okay, I think nimekuja sherehe, but our siwa mekuja so we can shut down the club and, you know, listen to what they have to say. Or would it piss you off when you're trying to enjoy yourself? Shots, zimeshika, general markings of whoever, GM, gilo, whoever, nyags, wameshika, and people want to come and start praising Jesus at you know that or rather in the vicinity how would you feel about that nobody can stop reggae comrade shows new ways of cooking without using gas man so a comrade recently took to the interwebs to show fellow university students how to get around the problem of not having gas or gas yako imeisha all of a sudden you know that moment when you say eh na hii gas imeisha it's like oh Oh, you think I'm still here? Now, th this is when I will show you I am no longer existent in your life. So, what happens when that happens? But you need to cook. You need to eat. You need to feed yourself. He showed how comrades can use an electric coil on top of a gas cylinder with the pretext of him being an electrician. I mean, of, okay, so, okay, that kind of makes sense. And part of the Big Mind Association where they always explore all possibilities so some people have praised his creativity while others have questioned the safety of his tactics now i mean this is a very normal thing there are always people who are going to agree others are going to be like hmm, but what if and i totally understand it because what if someone else doesn't do it right then that is a health and safety risk so gen z's and comrades even though we want to be creative let us also remember to be careful and safe Yes, I can do ABCD, but am I 100% sure that this is not a risk to my life and to all other people around me? Naget. And also, should the regulations of public universities around students having gas and cookware be relooked? Because currently, Ukishi, this is in a public university. If you're living on campus, you're not allowed to have mabokama gas and stuff like that. So people who live in such areas have to come up with creative ways to sustain themselves and to cook and to you have to feed yourself so i think you're forcing people to do things that they would never have thought of when you can easily just say oh yeah you can ata kama ni meko jamani the small one you una una nini ukisikia inafanya then unahakisha the the What's this thing called? It's not a lighter. Oh gosh. Mom, it's not a lighter. I'm talking about a kiberiti. I don't even know what a lighter is. So you can get a meko or something. I'm a coco, bro. Something very um economical and won't take a lot of space. My Vasha, or rather Vasha to the world. Highlights from the Safari Rally. Oh, you can't believe I didn't go. Or I will tell you guys why I did not go. No, I won't tell you guys why I did not go. So the WRC, and believe it or not, I thought WRC stood for William Samoy Ruto. I don't know where the C came from, but the WR kind of confused me. But it's actually the World Rally Championships. And it happened in 2024. A good number of you are fortunate to go. And it started from the 28th of March this year, 2024, to the 31st of March. Where? Nasimuliji enjoy so Finnish driver Finnish meaning he's from the country of Finland don't be like me and you are like oh but but see everyone else finished no 
he's from the country of Finland. So Finnish driver Kali Rovanpera. Ooh, Koi Rovanpera, Kali Rovanpera. Rovanpera German in Itafute. <laughs> who is currently 23 years old, dominated the notoriously rough safari rally in Kenya, securing his second win for Toyota Gazoo Racing. At 23 years old. You're probably stealing your ex's toilet. At 23 years old, there are people making a name and creating a brand for themselves. First off, congratulations to you, Rovan Perra. That is, that, that is something to be, you know, proud of. So the risk factor for the rally was also very high with two people almost being hit by rally drivers. Guys, I understand the adrenaline. Oh, you got it. You got it. Or rather, you will see the dust. I hear it's just zoom and it goes. And also, the rains were also very severe along Whistling Moran. So the severe rains along um, Whistling Moran made the roads also dangerously slippery. Now, ooh, Jesus Christ. Health officials are worried about the number of young people in Naivasha asking for PrEP tablets to prevent HIV after unprotected sex. Guys, munaenda Naivasha kuangalia magari zikires ama munaenda kuguza na each other's iskelebete and msokolombos. What is the purpose of you going to Naivasha? Most of these young people refuse to take the provided condom. And I was trying to protect the people who went to Naivasha by saying, oh, maybe they carried their own stock from Nairobi. And everyone was like, no, they did not. Of which I understand. So what is the point of these rallies? Ni usherati, ni magari, ni the experience. What exactly do you people, or rather the some of you, the most of you, mnaenda kudu? Ooh, PDD, Jesus. Because I will need to speak a lot on this. Sean Combs, popularly known as P. Diddy, he has a case. And I went over this case a while back. I don't know if you guys remember. If you don't, go back to that YouTube channel, that Control Z Tribe, that episode that I talked about, Sean Combs, popularly known as P. Diddy, because this is a follow up story on some of the things that have been happening of late and federal agents with u.s homeland security raided two of the rappers bro this guy has two this guy he has two houses where so they raided two of the rappers houses in los angeles la popularly known as la and miami on the 25th of march this year which is 2024 as he faces a string of varying accusations Yes, that is quite sad that is that, that that is not even quite sad that is very sad and his two sons koi whose sons p Diddy's sons were also arrested during these house raids the raids that were done in two of his houses and interestingly he p Diddy, was in miami airport seeking to go to barbados why wouldn't you take your offspring with you why are you trying to escape by yourself you've left your kids in the house bro really really that just adds on to the suspicions or rather to the case that is currently ongoing. And rapper 50 Cent has recently surfaced calling out his baby mama. Baby mama who goes by the name Daphne. They, they are exes right now. So after Daphne and 50 Cent were Chana, Daphne went on to date P. Diddy. So now 50 Cent is calling her an alleged sex worker because of all the things that are happening in the P. Diddy case. And also, let us come closer to home. Tony Apa Jirani, Tanzania. So, in a recent interview, Diamond Platinums also shared insights into his meeting with Didi. Oh, Diamond, it's a Tanzanian, whatever. This man has been invited to parties with P. Didi. And I quote, this, uh, this is what Diamond said. There are things we did, but those are not things we can post on social media because we have a future. Tell me that does not sound suspicious at all. Ninini yo ume post, or rather you recorded, or rather things that happened that uki post on social media, hauna future, your music career is gone, whether you're an actor, it's gone, whether you're a creator, it's gone. Guys, I think that kind of sounds suspicious, but again, I would like to know what you think on the same, because there's so much information that as the public, we are being fed on this PDD case. And honestly, bro, Mm, yeah, there's a lot of truth in it. And a whole African superstar, Diamond Platinum, said something like that. Mm, 
guys 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 there's definitely something happening whether it's behind the scenes or whether it is in front of our faces or rather underneath our noses but i wish some of you are underneath me right now but that is a story for another day and on today's explainer i noticed a good number of you do not know who gen z are so who exactly are gen z so from 1997 to 2011 that is you know even your bracket your gen z's and we as Gen Z's are also tech savvy and digital dependents who would probably die if TikTok was bad. Like if I woke up tomorrow morning and they say, oh, there's no TikTok anymore. Hi guys, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for subscribing to my life. But uh, you know, I think right now it's a, it's time for me to look for other things or rather transcend into bigger and better things. So your party at TikTok kubaniwa, woye, musi tufanye ivo ruto. I was joking. All the things I've ever said about you, I... I'm joking. And we also work to stay woke and afford our lifestyle. And we will also quit if the vibes are off. Now, there's a place I was working about two years ago. We're in 2024. Yeah, it was two years ago. And someone woke up one day and talked to me the wrong way. And I was like, you know what? Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can do this anymore. And Gen Z's, that is something we do. And on top of the list, we prioritize our mental health. I walk into the office, the boss is shouting, I don't want that. I walk into the office, oh, but you're supposed to submit that, that report by 12. It's 11.30. By 12, you will have it. Whether I will do it at 11.59, whether I will do it at 6 a.m. in the morning, best believe you me, by that 12, you will have that report. So the fact that you're pressuring me is not something I want to deal with. And with that being said, I hope you've understood. And if you haven't, you can easily just Google. This, this information is on Google. Make Google your best friend. That is what Gen Z's do. The beautiful lady that has been on your screen today, Koi Gaku, content creator, social media influencer, and your host for this show. We shall see you guys next time. Bye.